Bluff Gaming here with a Space Station 13 tutorial on destructive analysis. Destructive analysis is how the research department increases the fabricating learning matrix on the server, which in turn gives the ship access to more and better technology. If you interact with a core fabricator console, you can click the first option to see the current fabricator learning matrix status, which should show that all your tech levels are currently at 1. If you return to the main menu, you'll see an option for the destructive analyzer menu. The destructive analyzer is a separate machine nearby that you can insert items into. If an item has any technological worth, the machine will accept it and you can view its worthiness in the menu before deciding if you wish to deconstruct it. When you deconstruct an item, you recover a small amount of the materials used to create it and if one of its tech levels is equal to or greater than your own, Attention. it will advance that tech level created. by one. That is to say, if you have level 1 in combat and you put in an item that also has level 1 in combat, deconstructing it will raise your combat tech level to 2. Or if you put in an item that has tech level 3 where you only have tech level 1, it will still only increase your tech level to 2. Keeping that in mind, you'll want to slowly inch up your learning matrix levels one point at a time, preferably by using items that are just at the cusp of gaining you that level. At first, you'll likely be using a lot of simple items that you find lying around, but it won't be long until you have to fabricate items for this purpose. You'll craft most of these items in your proto lathe and circuit and printer, but you may also find the auto lathe useful for low level items, and if you're really trying to push your levels high, you might go bug the roboticist for some mech components. Each researcher has their own preferred items they like to deconstruct, and you'll want to choose your own set based off of how easy they are to obtain on your own server, how pissed people might be by your deconstructing of those items, and how much raw material you have available for fabricating new items to deconstruct. Occasionally, as you advance the learning matrix, you'll want to go to the settings menu and sync the database to the network. This lets other fabrication stations, such as the one used by the roboticist, gain access to more designs made available by your research. Of course, they'll also have to sync their own stations after you've synced yours, so if you're making a particularly big jump with one of your syncs, you'll likely want to notify those interested. That's your bottom line up front. Because Space Station 13 is open source, each server may have different paths towards higher tech levels. But if you'd like to see my personal method, stick around for the rest of the details. Welcome to Space Station 13. Thanks for sticking around. A big part of learning Space Station 13 for many people is all the trial and error that goes into learning each job. If that's something you value, then you should probably stop watching this video, as I'll be showing the complete path I take on base station code to advancing the learning matrix. Of course, if that's precisely why you're watching this video, then please continue. This job is frequently called R&D, and unlike other science jobs, once you've done the initial streak of research, there's very little left to do for the remainder of the round. Few people actually want to do this job, so it's a good job to do if you want research department credentials and plenty of time in the round to screw around with whatever or whoever else you please. It's also very easy to curry favor with the rest of the crew in this position as you can fabricate them almost whatever they want, and supply normally doesn't question why you order some of the more rare materials. Attention, new command report created. Using just items you can find in and on your way to the research department, you can quickly get all the matrix levels between 5 and 8 without ordering a thing from supply. That is more than high enough to please everyone on board unless some very specific circumstances or requests come in and, frankly, I don't think it's worth the cost of raising them any higher unless specifically requested. Anyway, without further ado, Let's talk about my specific path to technological greatness. Right as I spawned in, I snagged a tracking beacon off the cryo floor. It's unlikely that anyone will notice or care, but if you prefer, you can craft one of these in the proto lathe. Also, you may have noticed that I loaded up my machines with plastic, aluminum, steel, and glass before I went into the miscellaneous lab and grabbed three four-on crystals, one piece of uranium, and a toolbox. We only want the toolbox and the gas analyzer, not the rest of the tools inside, so feel free to leave the tools wherever you found them, or if you plan to use them, wherever they'll be handy. Toss one of the four on crystals into the destructive analyzer, and the other two in the proto lathe. 
The foreign can be deconstructed two times, raising your materials and foreign levels up to two and then three. Next, we toss in the toolbox, which brings combat up to two, then the gas analyzer for engineering and electromagnetism. Grab the cheapest power cell you can find to raise the power, and let's toss in the tracking beacon as well. The gauze in your emergency kit is good for bio, and finally, a micro manipulator should be lying around to raise data. This brings all our tech levels up to at least two. Start printing up Mazon goggles and toss in your auto injector while you wait. Queue up an advanced matter bin too and toss it in when it's done. Find or print high capacity power cell for power tech and a blue space triangulating device for blue space and electromagnetism. Now switch to your circuit and printer quickly to grab a Mark IV blue space particle beam generator board, which will bring the last of our tech levels up to three or higher. Once we toss in the nearby nano paste, we'll be at the point now that we're fabricating the rest of our items for simplicity's sake, but some of these items are available elsewhere if you know where to look. Let's queue up an advanced scanning module, a man-machine interface, and a stun revolver on our protolathe, then as they print out, we'll start a Pac-Man type generator board and a telecoms relay mainframe on the circuit and printer. Deconstructing these brings all of our tech levels to four or higher. Now we should have available a radio-enabled man-machine interface, and in the circuit and printer, a Super Pac-Man board, and a Durand weapons board, which you'll want to deconstruct before you deconstruct the Foron pistol we're going to fabricate. Next, we'll need a Ms. Pac-Man generator board so we can print a rig-mounted anomaly scanner, which will finish bringing the last of our levels to five. We won't be raising Foron or Blue Space Tech above five in this tutorial, but if you want to do that, you'll need to get a hold of some rare materials or interesting finds. A Pico manipulator is a cheap way to get materials to six, and while it prints, we'll queue up a wired network card, as well as a sleeper and cryo circuit board design, which you'll want to deconstruct in that order. Finally, we'll be finishing up at the protolathe by printing an inducer tool, an ultra high power micro laser, the first of our items using some of that uranium we grabbed earlier, and some rig mounted maneuvering jets. Deconstructing those three gives us the option to print rig-mounted night vision, which also uses a bit of uranium, but also brings us to the end of my standard path. As you can see, this brings our learning matrix levels up to materials 5, engineering 8, 4 on 5, power 7, blue space 5, bio 7, combat 6, and data 6. There really isn't much of a need to push these levels any higher, but if you want to, I recommend making good friends with a roboticist as several mech components can eat you up another level in some of these, or get some silver and gold ingots which open up a few more items that you can use to push these levels even higher. If you plan to continue manning the fabrication lab for the rest of the round, you'll probably want to get that silver and gold anyway as it will let you be a lot more useful to the other crew on board. Getting your fabrication matrix this high should make everyone happy that's paying attention to it, unless of course they had plans for that forerunner uranium you used, but even so, you could order more of these and argue that it was important to get these levels up quickly so other people could do their work. This is a powerful position if you happen to be an antagonist, as you can construct tons of weapons and items with little chance that anyone would notice and it's easy to bargain for items you can't fabricate by offering to make things for people who can. There may be cheaper or more efficient paths to research this far, and I encourage you to find them. This is just my path, and you're free to use it or discover your own. As I said earlier though, once you have your path down, you can finish it quickly and leave yourself with a majority of the round to do whatever else you like. I hope this was helpful for you, and keep your eye out for other Space Station 13 tutorials that I'll be making. Keep in mind that this is an open source game though, and each server has the potential to be much different from the next. I've made this tutorial on base station code, which should be relatively similar to TG code, but not too different from other code bases. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful and want to see more of my tutorials, and comment to let me know any crazy stories you have about Space Station 13. 
Of course, you can dislike as well, but if you dislike my video, I'll convince the AI to electrify all the doors you encounter whenever you play. Thanks for watching Bottom Line up front, and I'll see you next time.